Hello, hello. Good to Hi, see you. Hi, great to be here, Tamson. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. You know, it's it's always good to know somebody has the answers. And we started doing this coming up next where we were talking to different experts about midlife and about hormones and about menopause and changes. And I said, wait a minute, it's not just at this time in life. This is throughout our lives. And I've known you for a long time and you've been talking about it for a long time. Yeah, I mean, hormones affect you all the time. You know, just to say that women are hormonal is a, it's like crazy because children are hormonal, dogs are hormonal, everybody's got hormones. <laughs> so we really need to start understanding this language of our body that is called hormones. And we have to start learning how to support them because if anybody's watching that has a hormonal symptom, you know, and I know from my own firsthand experience with hormonal challenges, when they're not working and they're not balanced, they can really um, make you feel like that is all that's going on, you know, your, your hormonal symptoms. So really learning how to, well, how they work, what you do personally to make them work optimally should be something we're all talking about. Well, so here's what I want to start off with. I always like to know where people are inspired to do whatever it is, uh, whatever their life journey is. And you have such an inspirational story because you're just really, really a personal one. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I didn't expect to be the person who loves hormones the most on the planet. But <laughs> that's not my intention. Things just happen. You know, <laughs> but um, I went through a hormonal journey at a young age, uh, you know, so from 12 to 22, when everybody was getting their periods and complaining about it, I only got six in that whole decade, six wow. bleeds. And two of those were chemically induced with synthetic progesterone. And I went and had all of these symptoms that, you know, nobody seemed to understand and went to doctor after doctor. And finally, um, I, because I was at, at Johns Hopkins planning to become an OBGYN, I had access to some great uh, libraries and, and research. And so I figured out that I likely had polycystic ovarian syndrome and, and my doctor confirmed that with other testing. And that in that moment, when I got the diagnosis confirmed, really seeing the treatment options that were available, none of which were a cure. And this is the same, this is the same is true for whether it's PCOS or not. If you have fibroids, if you have endometriosis, if you're going through perimenopause, if you're postmenopausal, the treatments that are available to women, because there has been lack of funding and in research, really all we have are symptom suppression methods. We don't have any cures. So there I was as a young woman, you know, asking the doctor, if you, this medication you want me to take, will it cure my hormonal imbalance? The answer was no. And that's true for anybody. If you're going to the doctor looking for medication, that's the question you want to ask. Is it going to cure what's wrong? And the answer is no. And so that led me down a journey of, well, what, what is wrong? What is the root cause? Well, how did my body end up having this hormonal imbalance? And what can be done to really resolve it and allow the body to be balanced again? And that um, led me to create the flow protocol. And I became really passionate about building a platform, a healthcare platform for women um, to really be able to navigate any hormonal challenge that comes up. Because keep in mind, 80% of women will experience a hormonal imbalance over the course of their lives. That's almost every single female will deal with a hormonal problem. And we don't have a place to go. So I wanted to build that place to go to, to make sure that there were tools and products so that we don't have to do this do-it-yourself healthcare that you're all doing on Google. Like, how do I fix hot flashes? How do I fix right. cramps? We deserve better with our health care, and that's what Flow Living is all about. And, and you know, it, it, it really is true. And I, I've gone through some of my own issues. And in the last year, you know, I, I was actually on set, and I was in between, uh, it, was, it was in a commercial break, and I all of a sudden felt this like, weird feeling. I didn't know what was going on. I was hot. I was sick. I was not sure. And I got off of the set. And I went and laid down on the bathroom floor. And, like, I, I didn't know what was happening to my, you know, my body. I really didn't. And I didn't even finish out. It was the first time I left. I never finished out a newscast, which was so odd to me. And I went to the doctor, like, what's going on? I didn't know. And, and the same thing. Take this. Take Take this, take this, take this. And I was very concerned with all of it and wound up doing what you're talking about is Googling, Googling. And then, of course, I called you, remember? <laughs> I do remember. <laughs> so, so I knew where to.
to go for my answer. But for people that don't and, are, and are, are learning about this for the first time, you're helping women literally all over the world. What is the key, though, in taking control of your hormone health? Because it has to be an open conversation. That has to be where it starts. I mean, first and foremost, you want to become like a, a little scientist of your own body. Don't be afraid, right? Changes are normal. Like the fact that you, Tamsin, I mean, who is some one of the smartest people I know, w was not given the proper uh, preparation that, you know, you were going to be going through this hormonal transition so that you sure. could expect it. Instead, you found yourself just confused. Like, were you having yep. an anxiety attack? Were you having a heart attack? What's <laughs> happening to you? The fact that you didn't know that is a really important thing that so many women can relate to because think about, think back to when you first got your period. Sure. You most of us don't get told that that's about to happen. And instead no. it's like this big traumatic experience. Like, oh my gosh, now I'm bleeding. Or, oh my gosh, now I'm on the bathroom floor. What's what happened? Wrong with me? Yeah. What happened? It should not be this mysterious process. So first and foremost, you've got to get yourself educated. That's why I write the books that I write so they can just give you that baseline education because you know, sex ed class does not give that to us um, no. <laughs> at all. <laughs> and then you want to start to be really curious, a little research about your own body, track your symptoms. Um, I built the world's first functional medicine period tracking app so that you mm -hmm. can track all the symptoms of your cycle. And if you're in perimenopause, you want to be tracking. Don't, yes. Do not think for one minute that just because your period's irregular that you don't need to start tracking things. You need to really start if you haven't already started that practice. Understanding when you're having which specific symptoms can tell you so much about, is your estrogen off? Do you not have enough progesterone? Even looking at the color of the bleed that takes place every whenever it's happening for you can really give you a quick snapshot into the status of your hormonal levels. And that's, you know, great biofeedback. It's like a free blood work, free, free hormonal blood work that happens every month. Um, so I think it's important that that be the first place you start. Really start looking at what is your body saying to you about your hormones? And, and paying and really paying attention to it and then doing something with that information because that's the you know where where you come in with that so you know you wrote the book uh, in the flow unlock your hormonal advantage and it revolutionized your life but you really you don't just talk about hormones you talk about how it affects every part of your life whether it's energy how your diet plays into things how exercise plays into things it really is a full uh, 360 uh, what did you find was most surprising maybe to people who read your book I know you got a lot of feedback a lot of reviews but there's so much information in and I, I have to feel like people were surprised with a lot of that, a lot of things they didn't know. Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that it's the first book ever to talk about the infradian rhythm. Mm -hmm. So we all know about the circadian rhythm that, that we experience over the course of a 24 hour period. But women during their reproductive years have this second biological rhythm called the infradian rhythm, which we experience over the course of our monthly cycle. But just like it's too simplistic to say, oh, the circadian rhythm only governs sleep-wake cycles, which it does not only do that, it governs the timing of when your blood pressure is higher or lower, when your bowels are more active, et cetera, et cetera. It governs a lot right. of the timing of things. It's also too simplistic to say that the infradian rhythm only governs when you're having your period. It actually turns out affects your brain your metabolism speed, um, your your stress response, your immune response system, and your reproductive system. So it affects everything. And that's what's so exciting is now that we have this information about the infradian rhythm, you don't need to be thinking, gee, this symptom and this, like my brain fog and my sex drive issues are not connected. They are connected because it's likely that you're unwittingly disrupting your, your infradian rhythm by, and, and the main way that we do that is if you're eating the same amount of calories day in and day out, and you're doing the same intensity workout each and every day, you're disrupting it. You're disrupting it because just quickly, for example, your metabolism in the first half of your cycle, right? follicular and ovulatory phases, it's slightly slower. So mm -hmm. you can eat fewer calories and you can do higher intensity uh, training. Once you cross over ovulation, research right. is conclusive in the luteal phases and the bleeding phases, your metabolism speeds up. You need 279 more calories per day. Wow. And, okay. and you must not, you must not do HIIT workouts. 
if you do hit workouts after ovulation, you will turn on fat storage and turn on muscle wasting. So here you are trying to like lose weight. And I've maintained right. a 50 pound weight loss for 20 years. So I, I have got this dialed in, right? So you want to work with your metabolic speed when you plan how many calories you're taking in and what the intensity of workouts you're doing. Because otherwise, at best, if you stay the same with your calories and your workouts each and every day, at the end of the month, at best, you'll make no progress. Mm -hmm. But at worst, you might put on a pound or two. Well, I was going to say, you're actually working against yourself in so many ways. You're, totally you're really working against yourself. It's, it's just a, it's just a waste of time, and uh, and really frustrating because nothing is changing either in your body or in your in your mental well being. Because I, you know, all those obviously uh, go hand in hand. And I think um, it's I think it's frustrating too because as women, we're constantly searching for best practices. Right? We're sure. read, we're reading, we're investigating. Yeah. We we're invested in the process, but there's this unaddressed gender bias in medical fitness and nutrition research. Women are being left out only in all research currently, only 4% of women are included. So if you're reading a study like, oh, the new hot thing is hit workouts every day for right. everybody, that was that research was done on men. Right? Isn't it, it's it's amazing. It, but then you amazing we're having you, that conversation in the state, you know? It's, it, it's great that we're having the conversation because maybe it'll change. But right, then, right. <laughs> but what I want you to know is that that is the case so that when you're reading that information, you say, okay, but this might not apply to me. Right. You you're know, reading, and that, you're reading that, it the right way. Important. Yeah. And really understanding it. Um, let's talk about Flow Living because it is a, a modern hormone healthcare company. And, you know, the, the amazing thing about it, obviously, is it's it's virtual and anybody can access it from anywhere. And, I, you know, the, the great thing about it, though, is it has so much information. You can literally stay on it for a very long time. Reading one article after the other, you're going to find something that, uh, is about you in this stage of your life, no matter where you are, right. but also you provide solutions and that, and that's the big part. You don't have to leave there now and go find a solution somewhere else. You have those actual solutions. Can we talk a little bit about that with regard to supplements and what you provide? So we provide three modalities of support. So the first is our digital therapeutic, uh, courses so that you can, go through uh, virtual trainings to help you make the dietary and lifestyle changes that you need to get from hormonal chaos back into what I like to call hormonal flow without mm -hmm. feeling overwhelmed um, and stopping before you really reach the finish line. So the, that's, mm -hmm. that's really important. We also, um, I have formulated uh, and more are coming out, um, supplement kits that are evidence-based research on things that your hormones need to improve their ability to be balanced. Um, so that's really important. And they're, you know, therapeutic grade and non-GMO and no fillers and all those things mm -hmm. that you want when you're looking for supplements. And I, I did this because I couldn't find that um, for, for the women that we were seeing in the practice. Sure. And then the third piece is that we have telehealth coaching so that if you want to actually talk to a human being who understands root cause, you know, analysis of why you're having these hormonal issues, because understanding why is such an important thing for you to know. Right. Why is this happening? Because the why helps you understand what you should do next. If, for example, I know with you and I, we were talking a lot about caffeine, right? Mm -hmm. And caffeine and insomnia in perimenopause is a huge problem. And it's such a frustrating, vicious cycle because so often we use caffeine in our 40s because we've been raising children or we've been intensive in our careers. And mm -hmm. we need that boost of energy because our energy feels like it's fading. But then that caffeine leads to insomnia you know, and that's a problem because now we're starting to throw off our hormones, our insulin, our cortisol. It's a vicious cycle. How do we break that cycle? But even just understanding that that's a cause is a really great motivator for what steps you should take next. So between the digital therapeutics, the supplements, the app, and the telehealth coaching, women have the full supportive tools that they need to take action that's effective, that's affordable, that's accessible. It, you know, I, I think that when you talk about that, you know, you, you bring up the caffeine and I, and I was thinking about this. I've been to, you know, doctors, obviously, when I when I started to go through this about a year and a half ago, because I, I went into menopause a, a little bit earlier because I, I had so many different problems with my body. And um, 
And they said, well, just, you know, just so you know this, when you go into menopause, you're going to gain weight around your stomach. You're not going to be able to sleep. You're going to have, you know, you're going to have, you know, here, are your, here are your five generic symptoms, right? And this is what to expect. And this is what, you know, and, and take this patch and this pill. And I remember getting in bed and I saw like, I looked at everything I had and I went, I don't, I'm doing this, but for how long am I doing it for? Is it going to stop the symptoms, like you said, or is it actually going to provide a, a real answer long term? And then what what happens next with all that? And I, so I have to imagine that that is a conversation that all of us have in our head, whatever area of time, you know, whatever part of time we're in. But I remember looking at that thinking like there has to be something else. But to be having to Google that nowadays and try to figure out each one of those things separately is amazing. Um, and not just want to take what the doctor says for granted. You know, like sometimes you want to go, okay, this is just easier than having to do all the research myself. You've done all that research for somebody. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I think it's important whether you're going through menopause or fertility challenges or period problems, the, the, pro, the approach is very similar. First, we've got to address the fact that your body is is being affected by hormones in a particular way and we've got to support whatever deficiency exists so in the case of menopause right and the things that are happening at that time you've got to completely change how you're taking care of yourself right you've got to change your calorie intake so for example we talked about the infradian rhythm for women who are in their reproductive years once you mm -hmm. stop having a cycle once you're no longer ovulating anymore your fsh has re your follicular stimulating hormone levels have reached a certain threshold they become right. a number becomes higher high enough to shut down ovulation and you stop bleeding for 12 months consecutively then you're postmenopausal, right? Now you can do. Now you're back to a circadian only routine, so you don't have to worry about the infradian changing your your workouts and doing that. You want to actually restrict calories a little bit more. You want to dive into that intermittent fasting because that has been researched on postmenopausal women and gives the benefits that it has described to be giving with improved cognitive performance, improved insulin uh, sensitivity, improved autophagy in the cells. It's, it's a good thing for you to be doing me metabolically and life extension wise and cognitively. And then you want to switch up your workouts instead of focusing exclusively on the cardio that you think mm -hmm. will help you you know beat the love handles mm -hmm. you want to really go instead and focus on strength yep. right building lean muscle which is going to be your furnace you know melting fat furnace for you build more Forever. lean muscle and flexibility because you're only as young as your spine is flexible yep. so you want to be <laughs> flexible pilates yoga all the things that you can do for that. And if you focus your workouts in that way and really dial in the nutrition and take strategic supplements to deal with the, the new down-regulated levels of hormones, you need a little bit more with herbal adaptogens, you definitely need more with your micronutrient support, you can really nav like sail through this experience with great health. I mean, th think this is the thing that we have to unhook from. Your hormonal transitions are not a disease. Right. It's a natural right. process designed by nature. Right. right. This didn't <laughs> right. happen to you. Right. This is not a disease state that needs to be treated with medication. It's a, yeah. it's a natural transition of the body that needs to be addressed with lifestyle and dietary changes that change as your body is transitioning. We have six hormonal inflection points across our life cycle, right? Puberty, mm -hmm. we have, you know, our adult menstruating years, we have pre-fertility, pregnancy, postpartum, perimenopause stage one, perimenopause stage two, right. postmenopause, right? Yep. You've got to learn how to go with the flow with all those stages, understand what's changing and how your self-care has to change along with it. And know that you're going to get through this. Like there's going, it's going to be, yeah. it's good. and it's a matter of how you want to get through it. And that's, that's where you come into, you know, you talk about biohacking, uh, your, your hormones. And I, I love that word because it makes it feel like I can do this. You can. Right? When, you, when you use the word biohacking, and, and I think that that's important for people to know, because I've heard, you know, obviously like kind of in this, uh, you know, my, my peers are going through the same thing or getting ready to go through the same thing. And everybody has the same conversation. But when you say to somebody, you can biohack your hormones and, and get through this and actually have them work to your advantage, you make it feel doable. Well, I think the idea is that you have the power to affect 
your body's out, you know, output. <laughs> what you put in is how, what your body has to use to create whatever it's going to put out. So if you figure out the right inputs, you can change the output of your body pretty easily. It's a, it can be like a fun little game. But yes, I agree that it should be <laughs> yes. easier to do for women, uh, less of a DIY project, right. less of a figuring it out. It should be just much more standardized and simple. And that's why we're continuing to evolve and add to our program offerings on Flow Living to really help. We've helped thousands of women navigate perimenopause and postmenopause without medication, without synthetic hormones. You don't have to do that at all if you don't want to. And some women cannot because of history of cancers in their family, et cetera. Um, you know, taking hormones is not always the only thing that you can do uh, to deal with these transitional piece areas of your of your hormonal journey. Yeah, I, mean, I, lost, yeah, I lost my mom to breast cancer. So hormones to me are, you know, it's a, it's a very uh, delicate conversation, scary, a scary conversation and one that is always very alarming to to any of you know, any doctor you go to. So I, um, I want to talk also about the supplements you have, you have supplement kits now uh, on in, in flow in the flow. So can you talk a little bit about that and what they are, and who, who they'd be good for? So right now we have two, although we have a few exciting new ones coming out uh, very okay. soon that will support even more categories. But right now we have our balance supplements, which is really, that is for everyone. That is your baseline foundational, um, you know, these are the micronutrients that I have been researching for about 20 years that your endocrine system needs each and every single day in order to function optimally. Um, so these are your B vitamins, your omega threes, your magnesium, your D three. Uh, you know these these are the types of things that your body just has to have, but they have to have them in therapeutic doses, and they have to be high quality. Right. So that's the balance supplements. This kit that you see behind me, we just launched it a month ago. It's called the Cycle Sinking Supplement Kit. So for women who are still cycling, so this includes stage one perimenopause, where you're 35 to about 45, you're okay. still getting a period every month. Um, so, and women, you know, any, any, any time they, they're having a period, this is the first of its kind um, uh, supplement kit that you take one of the formulations for the phase of the cycle you're in. So there's a oh, formulation wow. for your follicular phase, a formulation for your ovulatory phase, because we have different hormonal symptom vulnerabilities in each of these phases. For example, in the ovulatory phase, because of the estrogen surge that is normal, some women struggle with that and they'll have mid-cycle breakouts, acne on their chin or breast tenderness or even ovarian pain. Right. Taking this, the formulation that we've put together can really help your body break that estrogen down more quickly and efficiently so that you don't end up with the breakouts or the pain. In the luteal phase, the formulation for that phase really helps uh, balance that blood sugar because again, your metabolism speeds up, but we often forget to eat enough calories. And so we feel hungry and bingy and, and moody and, and so frustrated, right? and frustrated, right? And so <laughs> the, the, each of these formulations support that particular phase of the cycle. Okay. Obviously the menstrual formulation helps with cramps and the immune system changes okay. that take place. For example, a lot of women, if they do catch a cold, they'll catch it right around the time they're about to start their period because of the immunomodulatory effect from that estrogen dip. It's a really fascinating thing. So you can prevent that from happening by strategically timing your supplement intake around what's the real changes that are happening hormonally in your cycle. So that's the cycle okay. thinking supplement kit. And, and I love the kits because it doesn't mean you're going to, I mean, look, you could go into the drugstore and you could be like, okay, I need A, I need E, I need C. I mean, I've had the you know, the cabinet full of all sorts of things and you, and you wind up not taking them really a lot of times because it just feels overwhelming. So to be able to pull it all together and you've studied it for so long and, and what you were also talking about, the fact that it has the right dose. So you're not trying to self-regulate that and, and figure it out on your own. Yeah. And we, like I said, we have more kits um, that'll be supporting more issues around right. menstruation, fertility, and perimenopause that are forthcoming this year.